He organized the Bayesian Nonparametric Conference in Oxford in 2019, last year, and is a member of the Board of Directors of ISBA. His research interests are in Bayesian nonparametrics and network analysis. So today he will talk about non-exchangeable partition models for microclustering. So please welcome Francois. And I would also request uh, all the participants except the speaker to, uh, to mute and if possible also Mm, turn off the video for the moment but and one more important thing is that if you have a question uh, depending on the nature of the question if it's important to for the understanding of the material at that moment please feel free to ask however if it's something that can wait please uh, uh, save it for the question and answer session thank you very much and let's welcome Francois. Thank you. Thank you, Subashi, for the, um, the introduction. Thank you very much for, for the invitations. I'm very happy to, uh, to give this, uh, this webinar. So this is joint work with uh, my former PhD student, uh, Giuseppe, uh, who, who did most of the work uh, here, and uh, my colleague at Oxford, uh, UIT. So this work is about so non-exchangeable random partition models for uh, micro, micro clustering. Uh, so, so random partitions uh, arise in a, in, a, in a lot of different uh, applications. So for example, in model-based uh, clustering as prior distribution uh, on, on the unknown partition in ecology, population genetics, uh, more recently maybe uh, net, network modeling. So just to, uh, to set up the, the notation, so the partition of a, of a set uh, of elements uh, labeled one to N, so it's a set of dis disjoint non-empty subset A and J uh, of this set N, uh, where J is equal one to capital KN. Uh, so those sets are disjoint and the union of those sets uh, is the whole set one to N. So KN here corresponds to the, uh, the number of clusters, which is necessarily so uh, lower or equal to N. And A and J correspond to the, uh, the set of integers in the cluster J. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, so this corresponds to a partition of the set of elements one to five, where you've got one cluster containing the, uh, the objects one, three, and four, and one cluster with the object uh, two and five. Uh, so random partition pi n of n is a random variable taking values in the finite set of partitions of n. Um, and I, I will be considering so uh, uh, partitions of, of growing size. And uh, so random partition of the, uh, of the set of, of natural integers uh, n is a sequence by n of random partition that satisfy the, uh, the consistency a condition that if you uh, if you take m less than n and you restrict um, uh, uh, pi n to the set of m elements to the set of first m elements then you obtain uh, pi m okay so as an example so here is a, a sequence of uh, partition that are uh, consistent so if you take uh, pi 5 and you remove item 4 and 5 uh, you obtain uh, pi 3 um, so, uh, so, so usually, so we are interested in, in, in deriving some uh, yeah, generative model for this uh, so random partition of, of the set of, of natural integers. Uh, so, with, uh, so having the objective in mind is to have some uh, interpretable uh, parameters that then capture the, the, the important properties the, or the structure of the, of the partitions. Uh, and so of particular in interest here, so I will uh, want to characterize the, the following property of the partition. So to characterize the, the growth as the sample size n increases of, so the number of clusters, uh, kn. So this uh, could be finite, so increase logarithmically with n or as a power of n. Uh, I would like to characterize also the proportion of clusters of a given size. 
So I define is K and R is the number of clusters of size R. Okay, and so K and R over K N, the number of cluster corresponds to the proportion of clusters of a given size. And uh, also uh, be able to characterize the, uh, the growth of the size of the cluster. So M and J corresponds to the size of the cluster G. Uh, okay, so I'm, gi I'm giving uh, just some illustration um, to kind of illustrate on, on, on some uh, data sets, uh, the, the different properties. So I'm, I'm considering the uh, Amazon movie reviews. So I've got uh, reviews, uh, reviews of, uh, of a sequence of reviews. And uh, so cluster corresponds to reviews of the same movie. Okay. Uh, and so I'm representing uh, on on the left here. So the that work. So the number. So this corresponds to the uh, the number of reviews. Okay, and uh, so the number of movies as a function of the number of reviews. So the number of different movies reviews as a function of the number of reviews. So which corresponds to my Kn here as a function of uh, n. Okay, and so what we have is that the, uh, so this typically grows uh, so sublinearly as a function of n. Uh, so here for this the same uh, data set, so I'm representing the so the proportion of movies with r reviews. Okay, so this is the, the r, and here this is the quantity so k n r over uh, k n. Um, so, uh, so I've represented this as a, uh, on the log log uh, scale. Okay, so these points represent uh, the proportion of movies uh, with one review, proportion of movies with two reviews, three reviews, etc. Um, and so, what you get here, you see this sort of a heavy tail uh, behavior with uh, sort of a li linear a linear trend on this on this log log uh, scale. So. Um, uh, so the distribution of the cluster, which is uh, uh, which looks like a, a power law uh, distribution. Uh, so the final plot is uh, as a function of the number of uh, reviews. Uh, so I represent uh, uh, <coughs> so for some of the uh, some of the movies. So for some of the cluster, their their sizes. Okay. So each line is is the M and J for a different uh, cluster J. Okay, so cluster corresponds to uh, reviews of the same movies. And so here for, this, for a subset of the movies, I'm representing the growth uh, of the number of reviews for that uh, movie. Um, so what we can see is also uh, similarly uh, sort of a linear, uh, sublinear trend for the growth of uh, the size of the different uh, clusters. Um, so, uh, yeah, classical uh, uh, assumption uh, made on, on random partition is that of, of exchangeability. Um, so, sequence my sequence pi n of, of random partition is said to be exchangeable if for uh, any n greater or equal to one. So, the distribution of pi n is invariant with respect to the group of permutation of, of one to n. Uh, so just to give an example, so the probability of the, this partition with one, three, four in one cluster and two, five in another cluster is the same uh, is if I do some apply some permutation of the of the entries here. So it's the same as the probability of this uh, partition. So in, informally, so it's um, uh, the uh, the distribution is invariant with respect uh, to the to the labeling of the of the observation. And in machine learning, it's sometimes called uh, the bag of world assumption. So you, you, you put all your data in, uh, in a bag and you just take them uh, one at a time and the order does not, does not really matter. Uh, so within this class of uh, exchangeable random partitions, so uh, arguably, so one, one of the most popular model is the, uh, the Chinese uh, restaurant process, which is a, a generative model for a particular class of exchangeable random partition. So in this model, uh, so I guess yeah, most of you are familiar with it. So you've got one parameter, a single parameter 
uh, alpha zero, which is strictly positive. Um, and so you can take uh, the analogy of a of a uh, of a restaurant uh, to explain the generative model. So you you consider a restaurant with a potentially infinite number of of tables. Uh, so the first uh, customer enter the restaurant and sits at uh, the first table. And then uh, imagine that you've got a number of, of customers uh, seated at different table. Uh, and then the, the customer n plus one uh, comes into the restaurant and will join one of the uh, existing uh, table with priority proportional to the number of people m and j who are uh, seated at that table or will uh, uh, sit at a new table with probability proportional to uh, alpha zero. Um, so, the, uh, so the properties uh, of this, uh, uh, so this generative model uh, uh, correspond to an exchangeable random partition and the asymptotic properties of this uh, model are, are, are well known for, for quite a long time. So as n tends to infinity, uh, almost surely, so the, um, so the number of clusters grows logarithmically with uh, n. Uh, the proportion of clusters of a given size uh, tends to zero. So you don't have this sort of a, a poor low behavior for every r uh, greater or equal to one. And uh, uh, so the size of the clusters grows linearly with, with n for, uh, for any cluster uh, g. Um, so there's a generalization of this model where you can uh, get uh, actually different behavior for the proportion of the cluster and different growth for the uh, for the number of clusters, uh, so which is two parameter version of the Chinese restaurant process. So where now you've got, you still have this parameter alpha zero uh, here and you've got an additional parameter uh, sigma uh, which is between uh, zero and one. Uh, uh, so you, you could extend the parameter case, but here I'm, I'm just uh, focusing on the fact when uh, sigma is is, uh, is non-negative. Uh, and so essentially, so it's the same process, except that now you're joining an existing uh, table with priority proportional to the number of people at that table with, uh, with discounted by uh, sigma, where sigma is between zero and one, and the priority of, of sitting at a new table is alpha zero plus sigma times kn, where kn is the uh, the current number of uh, tables or, or clusters. Okay, so if you um, so if you take sigma is equal to zero, you recover the, the one parameter Chinese restaurant process. Uh, now if you take sigma uh, strictly positive, uh, you obtain a model with uh, significantly different uh, asymptotic properties. Uh, also uh, well known for, for quite a long time. So as n tends to infinity, so almost surely you have that the number of clusters grows uh, polynomially uh, n to the power sigma uh, with the sample size n. And uh, so quite differently from the one parameter Chinese version process. So the proportion of clusters of a given size r uh, converges to some uh, strictly positive constant, which is uh, approximately of the order of one over r to the power one plus sigma, which corresponds to some uh, power law behavior with exponent uh, one plus sigma. Uh, so which uh, uh, corresponds to, uh, can match the behavior that we saw uh, on, on the earlier data set. Uh, and for the, the size of the cluster, so m and j uh, grows linearly with n for, uh, for any cluster g. Um, so, yeah, so those are, uh, I guess, the, the most popular model for uh, exchangeable random partition. So there's a, there's a very rich uh, growing literature on uh, uh, exchangeable uh, random partition. So uh, in many of people attending this, uh, uh, this talk have, have a great contribution on this. So, based, so model based on normalized completely on the measure, Poisson Kingman processes, Gibbs type priors, uh, etc. Um, so here I'm going to yeah, focus on, on one, uh, yeah, one limitation of this, of this class of, uh, of models. 
is that as a consequence of exchangeability, uh, you necessarily have uh, a linear growth of the, of the cluster sizes. Okay, so because of the, this exchangeability assumption, the, the, the size of the clusters uh, necessarily increases linearly with n as n tends to infinity. Okay, and so for some, uh, so this, this kind of limitation has been mentioned, I think, uh, yeah, recently by uh, Miller and, and, and co-author. Um, and uh, as, as we see uh, here in, in this data set, for example, it's quite undesirable for, for some applications. For example, in this uh, movie reviews data set, clearly the size of the, of the different cluster increases uh, sublinearly with, with n. Um, so, <coughs> So, uh, so what we propose here is a, is a class of non-exchangeable random partition models. So, that, um, so again, so there, there has been uh, obviously quite a lot of work in the in the Bayesian non-parametrics or in the Bayesian community on building models that relax uh, the exchangeability assumption. So, model, for example, uh, uh, based on on deep dependent uh, Dirichlet processes or model based on uh, uh, normalize on the measure. So here, the, the, the focus of this uh, model will be uh, maybe uh, slightly different. So the important property I want to uh, I want to capture is uh, so what has been called by uh, Miller and Coulter the, the, the micro clustering property of the partition, uh, which means that uh, you obtain a, a sublinear right for the for the cluster sizes. Okay, so the uh, the M and, M and J, so the size of the clusters um, increases at in a, a little O of, of N. Um, so I want to build the model with such property and I want to also to retain at the same time, uh, so the modeling flexibility of exchangeable random partition. I want to be able to, uh, so to derive the, 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 the growth rate of the number of clusters and uh, potentially to obtain also a similar power law behavior for the proportion of clusters uh, of a given size. Uh, and I, I would like to do that so uh, via a set of uh, interpretable parameters that can be related to uh, the different properties that I'm uh, capturing here. So the construction is, is uh, will be based on, on uh, tools that are uh, yeah, quite familiar with uh, many uh, in, in Bayesian non-parametric, so it, I, will, I will use so completely random measures uh, and, uh, and, and ideas uh, yeah, from probability based on Poissonization. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm not checking the chat, but somebody should let me know if... Uh... Okay, looks good. Um, okay, so I'm going to... Uh, uh, to describe, uh, to, to first give some uh, uh, some background on, on uh, completely on the measures. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, so completely on measures have been uh, very popular modeling tools um, uh, in the Bayesian non parametrics uh, uh, community. So I'm I'm going to use here uh, homogeneous uh, completely on the measure on R plus with uh, random weights and uh, random atoms. So such measure is uh, almost surely discrete and takes the expression, so W is the sum from J uh, greater or equal to one of omega J uh, delta var theta J. So where the set of points uh, omega J var theta J are the points of a Poisson process uh, on uh, zero infinity R plus with mean measure uh, that takes this factorized form, so rho of d, double, d omega times alpha of d theta. So I'm, I'm representing here uh, on the right, so uh, realization from this point process. So I've got uh, here the, the location of our theta j, and here the jump. Okay, so this point is omega j uh, var theta j, and uh, those points are uh, the points of the Poisson process on the uh, upper plane with this uh, mean measure. Uh, so I'm going to assume uh, 
to think on on uh, rho, on rho in, so rho is assumed to be uh, some levy measure on uh, zero infinity and uh, alpha uh, of a as we bounded for any uh, bounded uh, subset of corpus okay so once you have these uh, these points omega j uh, var theta j okay so the uh, so the the measure is uh, is obtained by at location var theta j having the weight of omega j. Um, so I will assume here also that uh, I will focus on uh, so-called infinite activity theorem. So where the, uh, uh, the integral of rho of d omega is equal to infinite. Uh, so which means that if you look at any uh, interval a, b, uh, so any uh, bounded interval a b so the set of omega j var theta j such that uh, var theta j is between a and b so this set is uh, is infinite okay so i've got an infinite number of uh, of, of of gems here uh, in any uh, finite interval a b uh, but the the levy uh, assumptions means that the sum of those terms is almost surely finite um, and I'm going to write, so W follows a completely random measure parameterized by two things. So the, uh, the, the Levy measure rho uh, tuning the weights and the base measure alpha tuning the, the, tuning the location. Okay, and, and in particular, so, I'm, uh, so the, the results in, in the paper are, are stated quite generally, but I'm going to focus here on just a specific class because we can uh, capture the, the whole set of behavior of the, of the model. So the, I will focus on the generalized gamma process rho of the, where rho of the omega uh, takes this form. So you've got one, uh, one parameter uh, sigma that I, I assume to be non-negative uh, here. Uh, so this uh, leads to an infinite activity, uh, completely random measure. Uh, which corresponds to the uh, gamma process as a special case when uh, when sigma is equal to zero. And I'm going to write, uh, so W follows the gamma process of alpha if sigma is equal to zero, and uh, W follows the generalized gamma process with base measure alpha and parameter sigma uh, in general. Okay, um, so now, yeah, I'm going to, uh, First, before presenting the, the proposed model, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain how we can uh, recover the, the, the one parameter Chinese restaurant process uh, using a, a quite complicated uh, uh, hierarchical construction. And I will show how this complicated hierarchical construction can be extended now to have a model with, with different type of, uh, of properties. Um, so I'm taking um, uh, W here to be uh, a gamma process with base measure uh, alpha, where alpha is uh, just taken to be the, the Lebesgue measure times uh, alpha zero, where alpha zero is a, a positive parameter. Okay, I'm represented, I've represented here the, uh, the W on the, on the left. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going, so conditionally on W, I'm going to draw uh, on the uh, upper half plane here a Poisson process where the mean, the mean intensity will be uh, this uh, measure W uh, truncated on 0, 1 uh, times uh, the Lebesgue measure here uh, over the x axis. Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm considering so uh, a Poisson process with this uh, intensity. Uh, and so because the W is almost surely discrete, you will have realization that will lie on, uh, on lines here. Okay, so I've represented a, a realization from this process. Uh, so, be, so the points will, uh, will be on the, on the, at location theta J where there's a jump uh, for W. And uh, obviously you, uh, if, if the points are exactly at the same location var theta j, so you can 
uh, you can consider that they are in this corresponding to the same uh, uh, corresponding to the same jump, and so I've I've, I've colored them uh, depending on the jump from which they originate. Okay, uh, so this is the, the construction. So now, how, how do I recover the, the Chinese restaurant process? So now, if you uh, if you order the points uh, of your point process by their uh, arrival time, okay. So say this is the arrival time of the first point, arrival time of the second point, arrival time of the third point. And this is the corresponding value, uh, theta one, theta two, theta three, etc. Uh, so you take this, uh, you order the points by the arrival time, and you look at the the sequence of theta. So in this sequence of uh, theta, so you will have repetitions, okay, because this uh, this measure of value was discrete. And so this, this sequence, uh, theta one, theta two, induces some uh, random partition pi n of the set of natural integer n. And this random partition uh, corresponds to the Chinese restaurant process with uh, parameter uh, alpha zero. Okay, so you can, uh, you can, you can recover that by uh, uh, marginalizing out the, the arrival time and the theta. Uh, okay, so it's uh, it's extremely complicated way to get to the uh, one parameter Chinese restaurant process. But now I'm going to yeah, use the um, a, a similar idea in order to get uh, a model with this uh, micro clustering uh, property. Uh, so the idea is it, it is to change the support of the of the Cox process in order to gain this sort of micro clustering property. So I'm doing uh, kind of the same. So W here is now a completely random measure with some uh, Levy intensity rho and uh, some base measure alpha. And I'm simulating so uh, a Poisson process conditionally on W, uh, which is given by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the measure W uh, times uh, the Lebesgue measure on two restricted to the fact that theta is less or equal to two. Okay, so essentially, um, uh, you can see it as yeah, sampling point process over the whole uh, upper quadrant and just keeping uh, the lower uh, uh, right uh, elements. Uh, and then, so how do I obtain my, uh, my partition? So I, I do exactly the same, uh, the same strategy. So I order the points uh, according to the arrival time. Okay, T3, etc. So it corresponds to theta one, theta two, theta three. Uh, and uh, so by doing this, so you obtain again a sequence uh, and this sequence because you've got uh, again repetitions uh, you've got ties, so it, it induces some now uh, non-exchangeable uh, random partition pi n, uh, pi n of n. Uh, so for example, this one with the five, uh, if you stop at theta four, theta five, uh, theta five. Okay, so here the, the partition induced by the first five elements is uh, so one is in its one cluster, two and four are in uh, the same cluster, and three and five are in the same cluster. Okay, so this construction is going to uh, induce some non exchangeable random partition. And uh, so now I'm going to describe uh, what are the properties of this. Uh, of this non-exchangeable random partition uh, as a function. So it's completely parameterized here by uh, this Levy intensity rho and the base measure uh, alpha. Um, so, I, so I will describe the, the asymptotic properties. Um, so, uh, so in the paper, we derive them for under general assumption on rho and alpha. Here, again, I'm going to focus on, on the, on the on, this, on a specific uh, special case where 
you can recover kind of the range of, of properties. So if I take W to be uh, my generalized gamma process with base measure alpha and uh, power law exponent sigma, so where sigma is this parameter, so that I take uh, strictly positive here. So sigma is uh, between zero and one, zero excluded. And I take for uh, the base measure alpha, so some scaling parameter gamma, which is not really important, uh, times, so it's the uh, theta to the power C minus one times D theta, where C is a, a strictly positive parameter. So if C is equal to one, uh, you recover, so the Lebesgue measure up to a constant, and otherwise you might uh, increase uh, faster or not. Uh, so the uh, so the first property, the microclustering property, is di directly related to this uh, to this parameter uh, C here. Okay, so if you use this model, uh, so the size of each cluster M and J uh, grows uh, sublinearly with the sample size, and you have that M and J grows as n to the power one over one plus uh, C, almost surely as as n tends to infinity. So this parameter uh, C tunes the, the microclustering property. So if you take uh, C, if, if C goes to zero, then you go back to the uh, to the linear uh, growth rate of the of the cluster, as in the exchangeable case. And uh, if uh, C becomes very large, then you've got a smaller and smaller growth of the growth rate for the uh, for the cluster sizes. Um, so here are some uh, some examples. So if you take uh, C is equal to one. Okay, so in this case, alpha is just uh, uh, the Lebesgue measure. Uh, and so the uh, if you take the your CRM here, you've got uh, essentially if you take W uh, on the interval t t plus one. Uh, it's equal in distribution to W on uh, t plus one, t plus two. Uh, and so you've got this kind of a, uh, so here it's a realization from the, from the point process. Uh, so in this case, so M and J uh, increases as the square root of N, and here I've represented so as a function of N, uh, sum of the uh, cluster sizes from this model. So now if you take uh, C is equal to four, so you've got uh, alpha of D theta is uh, theta three uh, times D theta. Okay, so you're adding uh, more and more, uh, uh, more and more points here as, uh, uh, as time goes on. Okay, so you uh, get denser and denser. And uh, here you've got that the M and J, so the, the, the size of the clusters increases as N to the power uh, one over five. So much, uh, uh, much lower uh, rate. So this is for, the, uh, for this uh, microclustering uh, property. Uh, so, uh, so what happens to the uh, number of clusters and, uh, and the poor loop properties? So if Kn is the, is the number of cluster in the partition uh, pi n. Uh, then, so the uh, asymptotic properties of Kn depend on both uh, xi and uh, the parameter sigma of the, of the uh, Levy measure. And so Kn asymptotically grows as n to the power xi plus sigma over uh, xi plus one. So again, if you take uh, xi uh, goes to zero, you recover the n to the power sigma of the, of the two parameter uh, pitman your process. Uh, on the other hand, so if you take uh, xi very large, you obtain uh, a, a growth for the uh, number of cluster, which is close to, uh, to linear. Uh, so this is for the number of clusters. So for, uh, what happens for, uh, to the proportion of clusters of a given size? So if you recall that KNR is the number of clusters of size R, then essentially, so we have exactly the same behavior as for the two parameter Chinese restaurant process. 
so as n tends to infinity, so the proportion of clusters of size r uh, converges to a non-negative constant, uh, which is uh, roughly uh, of order one over r to the power one plus sigma. So you obtain some sort of a power law behavior with exponent one plus sigma, so exactly the same constant as for the uh, two-parameter Chinese restaurant process. Okay, so here for the uh, proportion of clusters of a given size, the parameter C does not uh, does not enter in the picture, and I've represented um, below so some uh, uh, some simulations. So for different values of sigma, so you've got R, so K N R over K N as a function of R. Uh, so blue corresponds to sigma is equal to 0 0.3 and red to sigma is equal to 0 0.7. Uh, and so what you can see, so you can see the, the, so the dots correspond to samples and the line to the asymptotic proportion, uh, which is this one. Uh, and so you see this uh, power law uh, behavior with a slope which is in uh, one, plus, one plus sigma. So uh, um, larger for a larger value of, of sigma. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe just to give uh, yeah, some idea of the sketch of the proof. So the, uh, yeah, the proof is very similar to, to um, proof for the number of clusters, the number of clusters of a given size for uh, uh, infinite urn models, so uh, from the paper of, of, of Knudin. Um, so in our case, it's, it's actually, uh, uh, yeah, um, relatively easier because we already have this, uh, this continuous time model. So I'm considering the, the continuous time model uh, pi t. Okay, so at a given time uh, t, I'm looking at the partition of the points up to time t. Okay, and so pi t is a uh, pi of n t, where n t is the number of observations I've had at a given time t. Um, so you, you, you can show that uh, n t is uh, is a non-homogeneous uh, Poisson process whose rate is completely defined by the base measure alpha. Uh, and as such, so you can show that n of t is um, uh, equivalent to its expectation. And as n, so as, as t uh, goes to infinity, n of t is uh, as goes as t to the power uh, c plus one, all, all motion. Uh, so using this, uh, you can invert, uh, invert this expression. Uh, and if we write, so recall that 2n is the, uh, the time where you, you see the nth observation. Uh, then inverting this, you obtain that 2n is uh, asymptotically n to the power 1 over 1 plus uh, xi. Okay, and so now this is essentially what gives you this microclustering uh, property because if you if you if you look in continuous time uh, mjt, so the size at time t of the j's cluster to appear. So because of this uh, Cox process construction, so mjt increases uh, clearly linearly with t. And so by writing mnj as uh, mj as at the time of the nth observation, mj of 2nj. Uh, so, you, using the combination of this uh, and this, we obtain the, uh, the microclustering uh, property. Um, so, for the number of clusters, so the idea is, is again to uh, uh, to look at uh, in continuous time. So, to look at the k of t. So, k of t, which is the uh, the number of clusters observed at time at time t. Uh, so you can relate again uh, k of t uh, to some uh, Poisson process uh, and using some properties of regularly varying function, you can show that k of t is asymptotically equivalent to its expectation, uh, which is uh, of the order of t to the power c plus, plus sigma. So where the, now you, it depends on both c and sigma. Uh, and using the previous expression for 2n, you can uh, transfer the result on k of t to, uh, to kn. Uh, uh, okay. And the, pro the proof is similar for the uh, proportion of clusters of a, of a given size. Um, <coughs> uh, 
Okay, so it was for the uh, the properties of the of the model. So I will now describe how you do, uh, yeah, inference and prediction with this. So I'm I'm considering a, a simple setup where uh, so you first observe uh, partition by n of n observation, and what I want to do so I want to estimate the the parameters. Uh, so the parameters are, are the this power law uh, parameter sigma the scaling parameter gamma, and uh, the microclustering parameter xi. And I want to predict uh, the partition of the m uh, next elements. So pi, uh, pi n plus 1 up to pi n plus n. Um, so contrary to the uh, two parameter Chinese restaurant process, there's no uh, analytical form for the, uh, for the likelihood for the probability of pi n given eta. Uh, and so here what we do, so we can use the, the, the point process construction to use the, the, those latent arrival time as, uh, uh, as latent uh, variable. And so what we use, so we use some sequential Monte Carlo algorithm to uh, obtain an unbiased estimate of the, uh, of the likelihood, probability of pi n given eta. Uh, so we get, uh, using this maximum likelihood estimate of eta, and we use, uh, again, a sequential Monte Carlo algorithm to sample from the predictive uh, probability of pi n plus n given pi n and this uh, point estimate uh, eta. Okay, so we, uh, so we look at the, uh, the data set I've presented um, at the beginning. Uh, and so we consider first a training set of uh, 5,000 uh, reviews, then a test set of 10,000 reviews. And so the objective is to estimate the, the parameters of this non-exchangeable random partition on the first 5,000 reviews and predict uh, um, so the size of the cluster, so the number of uh, reviews per movies for the next 10,000 uh, data points. Uh, and so we do uh, we do this, and so we compare this with the uh, with the two-parameter Chinese restaurant process. Uh, so where we estimate uh, similarly, so the, the two parameters on the first 5,000 observation and use that then to predict the, the rest. Uh, so on the left uh, figure, so I've represented, uh, so the plane line corresponds to the, uh, to the data. Uh, the dotted line uh, here corresponds to the prediction using the, the non-exchangeable model. And the dashed line corresponds to uh, a prediction using the, the pit manual. So essentially, the, the non-exchangeable model is learning a parameter C, which is uh, uh, larger than zero here, corresponding to a growth which is uh, sublinear. Uh, and so, as you can see, uh, so typically the, the, the pit manual uh, predictive is going to largely overestimate in terms of prediction the. Uh, the size of the different cluster, whereas uh, the non-exchangeable model provides a better fit uh, here to the data. Uh, so it can be quantified in terms of the uh, L2 error uh, uh, for the, between the size of the, uh, of the clusters. Uh, and so uh, you're presented here for the number of points in the data set, the L2 error for the uh, non-exchangeable model in uh, in blue and for the pit manure in green. And so obviously the, the, the error goes much faster for the, uh, for the pit manure. Um, so you can also look at the, uh, so the fit in terms of the proportion of the, of the cluster of a given size. Uh, so here we, so we, uh, again, we simulate uh, from the, from the uh, predictive. And I've, I've represented, so the, the red dots corresponds to the, um, the proportion of clusters of a given size in the test data set. And in blue, so the 95% uh, credible intervals uh, on the left from the non-exchangeable model, on the right from the two parameter Chinese restaurant process. Uh, and so what we see here is that both models, so uh, the property, so the, 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 the the value of the of the parameter sigma estimated are roughly the same uh, in both cases, and they both capture um, relatively well this uh, uh, this distribution of the degree. So maybe slightly uh, better for the uh, 
the two parameter Chinese measurement process. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, how much time do you have? Some patient? Should I wrap up or? Sorry, are you asking something? Uh, yeah, do, how much time do you have? Um, well, five minutes. Okay, okay, so maybe I'll finish that. So yeah, just to mention that uh, you can use this model as a model for uh, yeah, for random uh, uh, multigraphs quite, quite directly uh, with the property that if you, uh, if you use it for such model, you obtain models where the, uh, the the degree of the node, so the number of connections of that node increases sublinearly uh, with the with the size of the of the network, uh, which is different from uh, from the behavior of some uh, recent random graph model based on uh, exchangeability of the of the edges. Um, yeah, and so yeah, maybe I, I finish here. So the uh, so yes, our first one. Presenting uh, a model of non-exchangeable random partitions so with the so-called microclustering property, so where you can have uh, so flexible sublinear rates for the size of the cluster, which is completely tuned by the base measure alpha, and you can get any uh, uh, any uh, sublinear rate. Um, for this class of model, we, we can characterize the power of behavior of the proportion of clusters of a given size, and this is completely tuned by the properties of the Levy measure rho, and in particular, it's this uh, the behavior of the measure at, at zero. And for the number of clusters, so the, uh, the asymptotics for the number of clusters are tuned both by alpha and, and rho. Uh, so you can extend the, the, the construction to uh, um, latent feature models. As well, so of the Indian buffet uh, type uh, model, uh, and so the yeah the paper is on the archive, uh, and uh, uh, there is some Julia code available online also if you want to uh, to play with the model. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so for a very nice seminar. So this is a question answer time. And if you have a question, please unmute your microphone first and feel free to ask your questions. Uh, hi, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for this uh, added parameters, uh, this row and the others, other one. So uh, is there any, uh, so when we do deep sampling, so is there any conjugate posterior available, which is like easy to simulate from? Uh, not that I'm uh, aware of. Yeah. So here we did. Yeah, we did something very. Uh, yeah, we did something very simple. We we took. Uh, Yes, yeah, so we, we yeah we took a grid of values for the, those parameters, and computed the, the <coughs> uh, an estimate of the likelihood over this over this grid of parameters. But uh, uh, yeah, I guess we, we, we could we could do a deep sampling as well. But but I don't think there's any nice uh, uh, yeah, uh, the conjugate uh, prior for this. Okay, thank you. Next, anybody? Yeah, uh, I have a question. Um, have you uh, considered some form of um, parabolistic symmetry for the for, for the models, like a constrained uh, exchangeability or something? Um, the, so, so what do you what do you have in mind? Constraint exchangeability. So, yeah. I mean, there there is some sort, yeah, there is some sort of symmetry in the sense that, uh, um, well, so if you take, 
if you take c is equal to z, to to one, for example, you've got ob obviously some symmetry uh, here in the model because you're taking a, a, the w with the the increments are uh, are iid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was considering more like a, a conditioning on the on the t than the past maybe some form, but um, conditioning on. On the on the time, on the time, okay. When you observe something, then the past must be right. like the, the, there must be some form of a yeah uh, yeah yeah we have we haven't investigated this. Thank you. More questions? Yes, I I have a question. Um. Does does your does the partition you're defining here is partially exchangeable or do you know how does this symmetry relates to partially exchangeable partitions? Um, I no, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's partially exchangeable. Uh, and yeah, as far as I'm aware, it there's no connection with the notion of partial exchangeability. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me ask uh, a question. So suppose this thing is happening at a latent layer, not directly on on the objects. So is there a way to do the posterior computation through this? So what, can you repeat your, your question? I mean, your, this this model is, is on a latent layer. So like in a Dirichlet mixture process. So uh -huh. or, or do you want if you want to estimate the partition, do you mean? No, actually the main interest would be to make inference on the the smooth uh, the the convolution basically, right? I mean, the after the distribution of the convoluted object. So yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we well, which, which corresponds to, to learning the partition. Yeah. yeah, I think implicitly, but that won't be the main goal. It's just a tool in in the inference. So. Yeah, so we, uh, I mean, we've got some experiments as well where we, uh, so we first estimate the, the, the parameters and then, uh, yeah, we, we learned, uh, uh, so here the, the, the partition is, an, uh, uh, is not observed and we, we learn the partition from, uh, from data that, are <coughs> that depend on the partition, the, yeah, similar to a, to a mixture model. Uh, in a very specific, so here in the, in the, in the um, so for the application, we, we consider that we, uh, yeah, we, we see the reviews and we want to learn the, uh, the, the, the movies from the, from the reviews. Okay, great. And, uh, well, I guess, um, I would, uh, I mean, uh, I, what I mean is, um, the, the next question is like, is there an alternative to MCMC like variational method that can adopt for, for some faster computation? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. I mean, we uh, yeah, uh, we we haven't uh, we haven't tried anything like that. So because of the kind of sequential construction. Uh, uh, the sequential Monte Carlo method uh, made made, uh, made sense in, in this context, but uh, yeah, I guess you, you you could try you could consider also some uh, approximate uh, Bayesian uh, in France approaches. Okay. Yeah, I need, I I thought that if there would be there, you probably would have already mentioned that. So that's. I know I understand that this kind of structure is fairly complicated. So, um, okay, so uh, other questions, please feel free to ask.
Well, uh, anybody? So if not, then let's thank Francois again and for a very nice seminar. And uh, we'll, we'll see you in, in a month again for our next seminar, I think by, uh, by long. So till then, take care. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, goodbye, Francois. Bye. Bye. Thank you.